And so we start a conference with a, a speaker we're really uh, happy to have. It's Dominique Alba. She's the head of the urbanism and architecture of the city of Paris. She knows a lot about architecture. She knows a lot about the past, what we can learn from the past, from the architecture of the city of Paris, and what can uh, let us understand what's happening in the future. So when you will design your applications, when you will design your architecture, maybe if you look back at the history of the city of Paris, that will inspire you to make architectures that are well designed, that last, and that are made for application and software to live. Right? So I will ask you to make a please a warm welcome for Dominique Alba. Thank you very much and enjoy your two days of the conference. Thank you, Dominique. Uh, I need the thing yeah. for... Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dominique. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you very much for inviting me. And sorry, because my English is not as good as, I suppose, the, your English. And my language is quite different from yours. So please, sorry. And if really you don't understand something, you say, ooh, and I will explain. So, um, perhaps... Okay. Uh, this is the actual situation of the place where you are. You are on the, just the south of this image, close to the peripheric. What's red is what's built, what's green is what's not built. This is easy, I think, to understand. So, uh, I'm in charge of a structure that's called Apur. So, you can go on our website and you can see all sorts of information and we have a huge amount of data. So we have more than one million buildings that are inside our database. And um, I think information on seven million inhabitants, all sorts of information, information of what's on the land, what are in the building, what's the age of the building, how they were built, information about mobility, about energy, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, on that large scale that we call today the Great Paris. So one of the specificity of Paris is the very high density of the city and the very large difference with here you are just after the peripheric, and the density here in Mont Rouge is less than half of the density you have on the other side of the peripheric. And quite different from the other city, as you can see, because much more dense in the center. So this is a history. So they, they asked me to start not... The, the first idea was to speak about uh, 100 years of networks. But at the end, they asked me to go up to, here we are on the 18th century, so this was the side of Paris, and um, it was, um, I think, 4,000 million inhabitants. And a little bit later, this is the situation of Paris. So what you have in yellow are the, um, what we call fortifications. If you walk in Paris, on the both sides of the Seine River, you can see some of them. They are m small pieces, but you can still find. But what's interesting is the white lines were the first network for mobility. And you will see years going on that we are still on the same grid. This is uh, the Osman period, where you have... Alors, que j'ai un pointeur? J'ai un pointeur ou un truc comme ça To show things on the slide I think there's not. Okay, so you, ha you have to think with me. Um, <laughs> the red line is the peripheric. But when this situation was, the city was only the blue limit. And Osman and Napoleon III decided just that they were going to extend. They just decided it. Today it will be impossible, but th at this period they decided it. You have to understand that was approximately here one million inhabitants in the city. So you have the blue part, and they decided to take inside a part of cities that were away from the blue part. And Mont Rouge, the place where you are, was divided in two, and you have one part inside the peripheric and one part outside the peripheric. And they built a new fortification. But at this period, the strategy for the war has changed and the fortification was totally ineff inefficient because uh, the people had, uh, they, could be they were able to throw things inside the city, so the fortification has no use. 
so they decided very quickly to destroy the fortification. And uh, here you have uh, the, the situation. So you see that we have still our white lines. So it's really the, the network of all the great Paris today. You have what's in yellow was the fortification with some buildings, yellow, that we called the fort. And inside you have the new lines, the red one, that Osman created in the existing city. So he created a new network inside buildings that were already existing. The metro was in 19, so you had 4 million inhabitants and uh, in the great size. You have to understand that in uh, 1914 in Paris, we had one more million inhabitants than today. So it was much more crowded. We had less employees, but much more people living it. And a huge part of those people were living in slums. So here you have the metro. And here you have the first extension of this original network where they decided to start on with highways. So you have the main highways, so you have a large scale, that's more or less what we have today with the A86 and A4, but you had also the idea to have the highways inside the city. So the idea, imagine if in your, uh, in your, modif in your um, what you're using in your network, you could imagine we have a huge net, but going around Notre Dame to make it easy. So this was, the situation um, just after the Second World War. Paris was uh, in a bizarre situation. Most of the buildings uh, were not in capacity to give comfort for the people. So the decision was made to protect the center, sort of uh, um, around we have there, what was blue, and this first red line inside was the first grid of our highway. All the center was protected and all the rest uh, was demolished previously. So here we start with heritage. So this didn't happen, but it happened partly. If you go to uh, Le Front Seine, if you go to Place des Fêtes, if you go to Olympiade, it was destroyed and built in a new way. But, so it was really this, this drawing. So what we have to, and I, I will explain. So what was very new that in the cities, we arrived new things in the landscape for cities, because before the highway, nobody knew what was a highway in the city. It's quite new. It's like in your uh, in informatic system, sometimes you have a new grid arriving or a new network, but nobody knows what's going to happen with that. So everybody was very happy with the peripheric because it gives an idea for cars and uh, it was uh, showing modernity. We were just after the war, so people wanted that. And everybody thought it was really going to be something very valuable for many, and many, many years. This was the existing situation in Paris, and that was what was built. So these were slums. It's, it's close from here. So this was the ancient situation, and this was the new one. So as you can see, everything was demolished. I suppose most of you know La Défense. The first building in La Défense was built in 1954. 658, and it was a huge slum. La Défense was a huge slum in Paris. And uh, this was the first building that was, and as you can see, now all this is destroyed and you have the towers you know in La Défense. And uh, this is uh, what, uh, along the Seine, you know there is now a garden, or you can walk, before it was for cars, but before it wasn't existing. It's not natural situation, it was built. It's concrete and like bridges. So what happened in uh, 75? Uh, Apure was created in 69, and Apure decided that there was something to do with the existing situation, and the solution was not only to destroy everything. And so we made drawings showing what we could preserve and how it was interesting to preserve things. 
At this moment also, just to inform you, this was the, the growth of the agglomeration. So we are just here, so it's one million, 10 millions, you can say four millions and seven millions. And this in the same mood is to show you how the network of the highway was built. They decided, here it was before 70s, 1779, so as you can see, it's like in your computers. I think you, you know how to do that, so you, you just do things and they connect more or less. And what is interesting is that now we have it there and now we are going to destroy it. So the big discussion is what do we keep? How do we destroy? Has it, do we have to make it disappear? Or has it to be transformed? And if it's transformed, can this has to keep the capacity to accept cars? For example, along the River Seine, now you can walk, but if you decide, you can also with, go with a car. And this is our main question today. And uh, we have a, a, a sort of atelier on the peripheric, that's the main discussion today. There's a, a, a workshop is um, the 12th of December, the third workshop, because the idea is, the big question is, what have we got to do with the peripheric? Do we take it away? Part of people want to just throw it away. Other people want to keep it, say, it's an open space, perhaps we can just give, put uh, trees and things like that on it. Others want to keep cars, a part of it. And mainly what we say is we need time, so we have to think step by step. First step, perhaps, a part of it with cars, a part of it with um, public transport, uh, a part of it with trees. We don't know. The, the discussion is really open, but it's a very, very strong discussion. And so this is our actual situation of our network. And all the first, the main lines always existed. And it's very interesting because when you work on that sort of quite big scale, because it's seven million people living there, All this old story is always underground. If you try to think things without taking care of that story, it fails. It means that the, our land, our geography, our history is sometimes much more stronger than that we think. And if we take care of her, if we know about her, if we think with her, we can go quite far and quite quickly. If we try just to fight against it's always a, a tragedy. Let's just show you how is the metro line. And so this is just to show you uh, the documents, how they change also in terms of urban planification. The first one in the, in the 60s was really uh, taking care of the shape of the city because everybody was really against the demolition and wanted to preserve Paris. So the heritage started there very strongly. And this one in 2003 with the arrival of Bertrand Delanoë was a political challenge. He decided just to say that it's, we have to stop with rich people at the west and poor people at the east. So when you're going to build, you will be obliged to build flats for poor people, social housing on the west. And this is to show you how people try to use those old buildings. This one is really uh, close to a Beaubourg, Centre Beaubourg. So it was a, an old building. You can see the windows and the large wall. And you had, a, I think it's very funny to show that one, and how you can add modernity and use the existing situation. And you have other examples. This also is a, an old factory. So a part of the factory was escaped, and you have an old building. And this is close to the periphery. Um, I want now to show you two other things we are able to do in terms of network. Uh, this is a tool we developed uh, to help to accept different buildings in Paris. Heritage is very strong, people are really fight about how the building have to be high. In Paris, you're not allowed to go higher than 38 meters, but in some places, we, we had a discussion with the people, and now we're allowed to have some 
buildings up to 50 and some ones much more. And this one, we, we develop tools so that we can, from a building that's going to be there, it's a tower for a tribunal that is already finished, made by Renzo Piano. We had calculation elements with topography showing different places. If you sit there, you can see the tower and it helps to see where we don't want the tower to be. And these are all the places for those towers. We are, we are just close to this one. And this one is this one. It's not built yet, it's, uh, it's going to be built at Porte de Versailles. Um, second, second exercise, how to change public space. Uh, we have a network, but we, try, we decided that we are, we are going to use it in the different ways. So it started quite slowly. Everything was crowded with cars. And um, we, we decided just more and more to change. So this is to put uh, things on the peripheric. This is the Paris Plage. Perhaps some of you went uh, in Paris in summer and you know about Paris Plage. But now this is permanent. When we started that, Bertrand de la Noé said, um, OK, I give you two months to find something to do there. Woof. I say, OK, we do that. And it was a huge success, world-size success. And uh, after we had other elements, but you know them, it's uh, the bicycle, uh, the things for, uh, we had cars also, a share car. But all this we need at each time a network. Each time you have a new proposal, you need a network. And the question is how you use the old one and the new proposals. And this was the riverbank. So this is a built situation. This was built, it's not natural bank. So it was part of the network and we did that. And this has to be kept away in 24 hours because of the flood. So it's quite difficult. It was a big fight. This was possible because we changed government. Because this doesn't belong to the city of Paris, it belonged to the state. And uh, François Fillon was, 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 didn't agree to do that. And we had to change the government and to have a, a government of uh, François Hollande to start with that. But all what you did was you, you needed to preserve the basic network and it's just an addition. So this just to show you what sort of network we have. Uh, we, 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 it's a very, very complex system hugely complex, perhaps more complex than your systems. But everybody thinks it's easy. Cities are huge, complex situation. This is only about mobility. I will show you things about energy. But this really gives you, we have, when, when we decide things on streets, we have to deal with all that, with history, with uh, uh, how many movements we have on a street. Um, you know, this is traffic and for example, the trees we have along the street. We need more trees, more vegetation, more nature. So how do we deal with that? And now we have very good information. But as you know, you can't um, make the projection. If you decide to cut a part of the highway, nobody, no calculation is able to tell you what's going to happen. So you have to decide to cut and after to deal with. So, for example, now you decide to cut a part of the highway and on the other end, you decide to have less cars. In Paris, we have for the last 20 years, 30% cars going down. And 70% uh, of the mobility in Paris is by foot. And in that period, I suppose you can share it with us because we have very nice streets with uh, shops and you can walk and it's very nice and it's not so big. This is just to, so these are the projects we have now for public transport. As you know, we have a huge public transport, new one. It's 200 kilometers. It's uh, the equivalent of the existing metro lines. So it's a huge revolution. It's like Osman. You see Osman, we were like that, we, poof, we boomed. It's exactly the same discussion also because all those people, they want to be Paris, but not want to be Paris. They want uh, the attractivity, they want the money, they want, um, all sorts of things, but they want to be more rouge or to be uh, 
uh, Les Ardoines, or Créteil, etc. So all those and those round parts are really what we call Quartier de Gare. I will not explain that in details, but just to, to show you what's going to happen. And this, the first line, the center one, 15 and going back to 18 Clichy Montfermeil, will be finished for 25. So it's in six years, this new grid will open. That means that all this part of the territory will have the same quality of accessibility than the one you have in Paris. And we have more than 500 urban projects connected to that. So that means that you have, that, that you have uh, an old network. Here you don't see the street, it's only urban project, but you have like uh, nodal, um, nodes, we could say nodes, moving very quickly. And those places, we are going to add square meters, add people, add elec um, to add uh, necessity to have informatic and uh, new networks. And the fiber is now developing quite quickly, but not as quickly as everybody wanted, and something more, not going in the places where we have social housing, not easily. So this is a big question for the politics. It's not your problem, but it's my problem. So this is just to show you what what's want to be connected. We have the high center, and we have all those spots that are going to be small high centers. So how how are we go, how are we, are we be able to just uh, be sure that the network, the new network? will be okay for everybody. It's not evident and we have to work on that. And we work on one thing. We decided that the, the, um, the indicator was, are we able to walk? So it's not the main grid for cars or the highway, it's the very local grid. Are we able to give space and walk? And are we able in those streets to have shops or things quite, ha quite correct along the path walk. I don't know if you understand. It's not very easy for me sometimes. My vocabulary is failing. But it's just explaining that it's a huge amount of money. It's 35 million, 35 million of euros. Billion of euros, thank you. <laughs> so it's not enough, 35. Okay. So, it's a huge amount of money, it's a huge project. But if the people are not able to walk in this round, to, to go to the station, to share things using streets, we will fail. And this is showing the accessibility with bicycle less than two kilometers. I mean, 90% of the people living there and working there are less than two kilometers close from a public transport, heavy public transport station. It's not bus, it's heavy public transport. So it's metro, it's a railway, uh, it's RER, and it's tramway. That means that if you have the good la uh, last kilometer grid, you can really stop using your vehicle. You can stop using the cars. And perhaps offer more comfortable life for everybody, because less noise, uh, less stress, uh, less space for cars, so more space for uh, perhaps uh, sports and uh, green space, etc. And for the last, just because we, we spoke about history, mobility, how the city grew and what are our main targets today, but we have another sort of main target is the thing about energy. And energy, it's network. Energy isn't produced in Paris. Nothing. Very, very tiny, tiny, tiny part. So it comes from all over Europe. So I, will, I won't ex explain you all the energy grid. You have this on our website. You can look about the gas, about electricity, about water supply, etc., etc. But was it interesting how a uh, town planning agency helps to deal with energy. So that uh, the thought of local energy we could try to produce in the Great Paris. 
So we try to say, are we able to do a local plan for energy? So we decided to cross six informations. The age of the buildings, why? Because a building built in the 60s is very bad for energy. A building built in the 80s is better because we had the first rules. And a building built before the second war is quite good because it's always connected to other buildings. So we have the ancient cities, you know, everything is quite connected one to another one. After the war, it's modernity, so the buildings are alone and not made with good quality. And after, we had new rules, so it's in between. Uh, I don't know if you have seen the red buildings, you can, if you went by walk, close to the periphery, you have, it's quite finished. You have the great uh, red buildings. Those buildings were built uh, in uh, 1920, and the level of comfort for uh, heat was 14 degrees. Today, if you haven't got 20 in your flats, you just are frozen. So it's a little bit difficult to know how to behave on those buildings. They are nice, so it's very important for heritage. They are occupied, they are very low rate. So now we have a huge work to see how we manage with those buildings. And it's, we, start, we decided not only to be on climate, but also on carbon. But this will be another story for another happy days. But so age of the buildings, typology, if you have a collective building or an individual building, you don't have the same, the same needs and you can propose the same thing. The density, as I said, the owners, if it's location or if it belongs to you. The density, if, you have, if you're alone in 300 square meters or if you have 30 people in 50 square meters, it's not the same. And the income, what are you able to pay? And using all that, so very different informations, we cross that and we can have a strategy. So this is the strategy. Uh, it's in the, in the document. It's a very, very, it's not so difficult. It means that you have tools and you have situations. So situations give the basic information. I will not go inside the details, but the tools, they, okay, in your case, you are alone in your house. We ask you to uh, do things with the water, with geothermal, etc. But you, you live in a collective building with collective heating, so you have con to be connected to the, to the urban grid, etc., etc. And this is how you use your tools in existing situation. This is close to Republic, so we, we made the studies, everything is uh, calculated, so you can uh, add solar panels, you can add pieces of square meters, you can have uh, the tower may have a wall where you can heat water, etc., etc. That's to mean that it's, you have an heritage, you have tools, and it's not all the tools that go in the same way on the heritage. Each situation will be more specific. And this, I think, is the way we have to do with heritage, the way we can work with heritage. If we decide that heritage is something you can treat in different ways and not in only one way, we can deal with heritage. But if we try to say that here, for example, there's only one solution, uh, that's sure that we'd never, never be successful. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Dominica. I'll go there. And the idea of this talk really, and thank you really for all this beautiful slide and explanation, was the question about what's legacy and what's heritage? You know, what do we inherit? Are we happy because it's a yeah, a beautiful thing or is it debt? Right? So we'll all, yeah, we'll have to make that decision sometimes. But yeah, who recognized patterns that they see in their everyday job, right? Yeah, yeah quite, quite a people, right? The decision we have to make, right, for the long term, what do we rebuild, right? So uh, uh, maybe, uh, Dominique, uh, you, you had really uh, important parts here, and, and in these conferences, we will talk about how we will update legacy, right, how we will change it, or sometimes we are to do completely new things, right? And in the architect and developer community, we love 
doing new things out of nothing, right? We really love that, and I see people saying that, that right? Architects so also, they love to do new <laughs> things. Don't worry, everybody loves to do new things. But I think that we are in a special century. We made so many things since as all the 20th century. We, 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 we grew in so many different ways. So now we're, perhaps we just have to think using all that. It's also, you know, if you speak about carbon system, the best square meter in carbon system is the one you will not build. So question is like that. So uh, we, we think, and I, and I show the riverbank and I show uh, those public spaces, how we, it wasn't so easy, you know. Uh, I started in 2001 in uh, Delano's team and we were really, um, we wanted to change the things in the city but to take the city with us and to take all the history with us. And this was really very important. And I think it, it, was the, it allows the success because these 10 years were successful. Paris grew. The, okay, it's a problem because now it's very expensive. But before 2000, it wasn't so expensive. And 10 years later, it was really like that. So speaking of poor people, speaking of existing situation, sharing space, uh, trying to use more the network with a bill with the others, all those things created value. So I think this, and what, what, were, what when we had the discussion is say that we, we need, and um, something very important also is the knowledge about what was built. Uh, we spend in Apure, uh, we have very good knowing and we go inside to understand how the things were done so that we can also consider them as an heritage. If you don't understand how a building is built, you can't act on it. You have to understand really if made with brick, how was the thing for water going through the walls, etc. I think it's the same for your uh, competences because if we lose the codes, of the original grids or networks, we will not be able to perhaps uh, work with all things we can, uh, you know, you, it's always the same, you open, you, you're always looking for something you made 10 years ago, 15 years ago, etc. But if you haven't the code, you will find the document, but you will not be able to treat the document. And we have exactly the same thing in Apure with our, our systems, you know. We, we have the, the, log, the, the logiciel, the logiciel are changing, and we can't open all documents. Yeah, so you, have, you face uh, technical depth yeah. in a sense of architecture, but also software, because some yes. of the documentation you used to have, uh, yeah. We have time for one question for the audience, from the audience, if someone wants to take, take one. Yeah, so we, we're good, yeah, we have one question here, yeah. Thanks a lot, Dominique. Um, did I understand well that the design that's used for um, Grand Paris is similar to the logic that was used by Haussmann? Is that what you said in terms of I the spirit? I didn't understand. Can you, can you repeat? L'état d'esprit dans lequel est construit le, le Grand de Paris oui. et dans l'état d'esprit du Haussmann? Oh, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> But I think that, in fact, what's going to happen is that the people living in this new area connected with this new transport grid will have access to services, university, culture, etc. in the same timetable than the one in Paris. So it, for the politics, it's impossible to be one thing. But for the people, they live one thing. So this is going to be difficult. For Osman, it was the emperor. Yeah, so no problem. Now we have um, 131 Myers in the Great Paris. And uh, it's a purple, it's a very big fight. We have, in, we have a very big problem with the institutions. But this is another story. And uh, I think that it's possible to, to go on, to find a way to try to have the good network just leaving the institutions doing their job and just going on with heritage. That's really something that helps us 
in a, here in a Paris, great Paris situation, it helps us very strongly. Yeah, so I think, uh, yeah, we can really thank you, Dominique, because it was not easy to, to, when you are an architect, like with buildings, to talk in front of software architects and, and deliver a story. And so we can really, really applaud her for that. Thank you, Dominique. Thank you very much. Thank you,